happy to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Lady Coquine. Good evening. I'm Lady Coquine. And I love it when you say my name right. Anyway, <laughs> the other day, I have been, uh, on Monday, I've been trying to hang out with one of my friends for a while, and it just, just wasn't working out. And finally, finally, we got together. And we had very limited time constraints, and I was like, yes, we can hang out between approximately two and four. And so she came over, and she's a quite the colorful individual. She uh, has bright purple hair. And when she showed up at my door, she was wearing this maroon velvety jacket and this purple dress and green shirt that she had altered with a scarf and these teal tights of her ripped. And she had also, hmm, my mystery box, had these boots that were masculine and feminine, they were bulky, they were ugly, they were cutesy, and they just, they were an eyesore. <laughs> That's right. So, cutesy eyesore. And they have the polka dots, so they're really cutesy eyesore, and I love them, in a way. I'm gonna leave them over there. <laughs> so we got to my apartment, and uh, we were talking, and as I often do with my friends and uh, people that I'm close to, I happen to give them sex advice. Um, and we were talking, and I realized that this she needs to be more daring. She needs to go out there and do crazy things and kiss boys. I told her to kiss more boys. And so I realized that what I was doing at 4 o'clock, um, well, maybe she'd like to stick around and see that. And so I tried to shift the conversation in that direction. And I say, oh yes, uh, I know we can only take out between two and four. And at four o'clock, my, my maid's coming. And there was a pause. And I go on to tell her a little bit about my maid situation, which uh, every week, um, between either Monday or Wednesday, my maid comes and he cleans my house for me naked while I distract him, if you will. And that can mean a whole different things. That can mean tying his arm behind his back. Um, yesterday, I gave him an eye patch. So, you know. But uh, that particular day, I told her that he would very much enjoy her to stay because he has a very big fetish for a clothed female naked male. And so I decided that I was going to try to convince her to stay and experience this with me. And for me, it's, you know, just, just cleaning, just a little housework around the house. And so she's sitting there on the edge of my bed, and she's not really convinced that she should stay for this. And she asked if she can go smoke a cigarette. And I said, yeah, sure, go on my balcony, smoke a cigarette. And I decide when she goes to smoke a cigarette that when she comes back in, I am going to have everything ready, and I'm going to convince her that she needs to do this. So I run around my apartment, I grab things that she needs um, to make her a dom. And so when she gets back in, she sits on the edge of my bed, and she's perched there, and she's a little bit more confident, and she looks at me and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. It's like, oh, good. And so the first thing a dom needs is a name. That's very important. And it's a tradition in the BDSM community to actually get your name given to you. So I'm looking at her and I, I'm just not, I, I can only see these boots. I can only see these boots on the floor in front of me and the sun is shining on her hair and she's sitting there and she has tattoos and she has purple hair and I'm like, oh yeah, she could so be a dom, I love this. And there's nothing that, just, I can't get this name out of my head. And I'm just looking at these boots. And she's like, you know, yesterday I was bubbling over with sexuality and today I'm just feeling innocent. And that was the name. I, I was like, oh, this name makes sense now. And her name, I named her Mistress Sunshine to match the booth, yeah. And so now that she had a name, she had to look the part. And what she didn't know was what I had hidden. And so I was like, all right, girl, like, take off your socks. We have to, you know, put you in some nice shoes, some heeled shoes, and make you look like a dom. She's like, oh, girl, like, my feet are nasty right now. And I'm just like, oh, we'll work with it, we'll work with it, no problem. Take off her shoes, and she has some chipped green nail polish, and take her into my bathroom and put some toe spreaders in and paint her toes a darker color so she can't see the nail polish. And, you know, then I take her back out and take off her T-shirt, and I decide that she needs something to go over her dress. So I pull out a bustier, 
strap her in it. We get that going. Now she's starting to look like a dom. You know, she's still kind of walking a little different, kind of holding herself a little different, which is my intention. And then we start to discuss what it means to be a dom. And she was like, can I have him do anything? Like light my cigarette? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can light your cigarette. He can pick up shit for you. You can, you know, kiss your feet, whatever, you know, just, just go with it. And, you know, we started to talk about some protocol things and, oh, what's in my box? And uh, she started to enjoy it. The next thing I decided to give her to be a dom was a tool of the trade. I decided to give her this, which is something I personally made. She starts to hold it, wield it. Oh, yeah, she's starting to feel the part. I can feel it in her. Hmm. She starts to slap it around and giggle. Yeah. The next thing she needs, she asks me for a glass of water, and she's in my kitchen, and she starts to reach for a plastic glass, and I'm like, oh, no, girl. Doms don't drink out of plastic glasses, please. <laughs> so I pull out two wine goblets and fill it with ice and the drink of choice for all mistresses everywhere, Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had to convince her, I had to loosen her up a little bit. And we were sipping and telling her, yeah, so he's gonna be here precisely at four, without fail. So at, sure enough, at uh, four o'clock, I get a text message, mistress, I'm here. And I'm like, all right, you just stay here. You perch yourself on the edge of this chair and just look charming when he gets in. And uh, I go downstairs and I get my slave and bring him up, and I, tell, I don't tell him what, it, what, what he's gonna be doing today. I just tell him that I have a surprise for him, and it's waiting for him. And so I get up into my apartment, and she's sitting there on the edge of my chair with her wine goblet in one hand, and this crop in the other, just perched there waiting for him, not saying a word. It was like the perfect image. Mm, Mistress Sunshine, ready. And, <laughs> yeah. And so my slave, which is protocol, um, he gets on his knees, and I put a collar on him, and I look him in the eye and I was like, this is Mr. Sunshine. Say hello to Mr. Sunshine. And he's like, hello, Mr. Sunshine. And I'm like, look her in the eye. He's like, hello, Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> and she's like, hello, you know. And I tell him to take off his clothes. It's a protocol. I make him give me my clothes so that I can give them back to him later. And after he takes off his clothes, he's pretty much aroused a little bit at the time. And uh, Mr. Sunshine, I have him come back over to him on my knees. And I tell him that we're going to use him creatively the day. And I put him knees and elbows, give him a few spankings. And then I get out a lovely jar of markers. And I tell Mr. Sunshine that we're going to draw on him. So we're playing tic-tac-toe and you know, I autograph an ass cheek and I encourage her to do the same, you know, leave my mark. We're playing around. And I put the, the jar of markers right on the small of his back and he's holding it while we're drawing and we're just chit-chatting. And uh, we'll finish drawing and I give her the jar of markers and she puts the, I put the lid back on and hand it to her. And there's this like glint in her eye. And she like looks at the jar of markers and she looks at me and she goes. <laughs> <laughs> it was priceless. And then she does this. And as the slave knows, anything on the floor needs to be picked up with his mouth. So he starts to grab the markers with his mouth and you know I'm pushing them around and making sure he gets them. And she, he's putting them in there. And when we finally get the last jar of markers, you know, she puts the jar, or the last marker, she puts the jar on the floor. And he has to try to get this lid on. And I tell him he still has to use his mouth. Well, he's having a little trouble, as you can kind of see. It doesn't really fit. And I'm not, I'm not gonna put it in my mouth, but you can get an idea. And so I decide that it's my turn. I straddle him and I say, all right, you have to pick that up with your mouth. And for every time you don't pick it up, I'm going to hit you three times. And so it takes him one time and he misses and I'm like, one, two, three. And he's sitting there and he's starting to get a little discouraged and shake. He's not really into a lot of pain, but you know, it's for the show. And he tricks it up another time he misses and I'm one, two, three, waiting for him to finish. And the third time, he still doesn't get it, and I permit him to use one hand to pick up the lid and put the jar back on. And after he's done, he puts the jar, we put it on the shelf, and I guide him over to my little tile area by my balcony. I have him back up against the wall, and I tell him to stay still while I get out this. I'm just an ordinary tube of lipstick. And I roll it up, and I start to make a small little circle on his nose, like a clown. And then I make one more row. 
and then make another row. And I look at Mistress Sunshine and I say, good enough? And she says, oh no, one more row, yeah. So <laughs> with, her, with her biting crop. And do one more row. And I say, look at Mistress Sunshine. I say, good enough? And she says, oh no, you should definitely put a circle on top of his head for a double their score. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I like this, Mr. Sunshine. And then I look my slave in the eye after I've drawn this bullseye on him, and I tell him, we're having a spitting contest, and you're the bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> and we assign points for each ring, and we decide that uh, in order to get our mics hard, lemonade, and ourselves salivating, hand out a few Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> All right. That's right, everyone loves somebody free. Candy, candy. Um, and I hand her a Jolly Rancher, and I push, she puts it in her mouth and starts to suck on it. We get a good load of spit in our mouth, and I take the first hit, and I totally miss. Mrs. Sunshine actually makes the first bullseye, third time. We're just spitting, pah, pah, backing up, getting really close. I get really close to his ear, and I giggle, and <laughs> And he's closing his eyes at this point because he doesn't want anything in his eyes. So uh, he can't see when we're this close. And we're spitting and we're doing back and forth, back and forth, spitting. And then finally, Mistress Sunshine decides, well, I'm a little tired of this. And so he can't see. So she starts spitting on the wall and on the window. And she's like, oh, no, I got some on the wall. I got some on the window. You're going to have to clean that up later. After the spinning contest is over, Mr. Sunshine goes outside for a cigarette. I make my slave on his knees go light her cigarette. And I make him start to clean up the mess. And I tell him he needs a toothbrush, the orange cleaner, and a towel. And I make him scrub the wall in small circles. That's right, small circles. Or he uses his tongue. And Mr. Sunshine's at the door just, oh, yeah, smoking her cigarette, looking at him with her two eyes and my two eyes on him. You could feel the slave, like, ooh shivering in his little naked boots. <laughs> he finally finishes the wall. I tell him to take the toothbrush around. We go into the kitchen, finally go into the bathroom, scrubbing little things that I point out with my little whip. Oh, clean that, clean that, clean that. And we're sitting on the edge of the bathtub, and uh, I decide to take one more last loogie and hit, hit the mirror in front of him. And then I ask Mr. Sunshine if she'd like to take a turn. And she sits there, and she thinks for a minute dramatically, and Pause. Pause. There's another pause. All over his back. It was fantastic. And it's, it's running down his back into his ass crack. It's great. And he's just cleaning the mirror. Fantastic. And Mr. Sunshine has to go shortly after that. And, uh, she packs up her things. I make him put her shoes on, those shoes, <laughs> and kiss her feet and all that snazzy jazz. And I clean up my slave, too. He finishes cleaning my house. I take a baby wipe to his face. He has to go to his parents' house and eat dinner later, you know. Clean that off. Clean out the bullseye. You know, give him a little kiss. And as I'm sending him out the door, my protocols, you know, I give him a hug and a kiss and tell him to see him next week. And he walks out the door, and he turns around, and he goes, that was the best surprise ever. <laughs> and that day, that was the day Mr. Sunshine was born, and my apartment was cleaned, and a slave was pleased. That's my story.